So if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen a lot of posts lately that I am doing a retreat in Sedona coming up at the end of April, April 25th through 28th. So I just went to Sedona. I was visiting the mainland for a reggae festival in California, and I thought I would pop over to Sedona while I was on the mainland so I could get ready for uh, that retreat and just kind of tap in spiritually, be in the energy of the land there. And so I reached out to Anahata Ananda uh, for a couple reasons. One, she's been a guest on the show before, episode 43. If you missed that, I highly recommend she gets into the Sedona Vortex energies. And we also get in a really beautiful conversation about masculine feminine energy, the best description of understanding that whole concept that I have ever heard from her. And it's just so in alignment with how Anahata is and why I uh, asked her to be a facilitator at my upcoming retreat. Um, she's been doing this work for a very long time. I found her on Aubrey Marcus's podcast several years ago, probably like five years ago plus now, and was just blown away by her. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Anahata if she's new to you. So um, she is, uh, she well, first of all, she has a place in Sedona now called Shine Sedona. I cannot recommend enough going there. If you go to Sedona, they have all the healing things you could ever think of in this insane boutique. If you are into like, I don't know, kind of medicine woman vibes that are high end. But okay, so the way she calls her process is shamanjelic healing. Okay, so like the compassion and tenderness of an angel and the wisdom and strength of a shaman, which is a really great way to explain her approach and how your experience of Anahata if you get to meet her. So she's a also a certified high performance coach, a shamanic healer and soul guide. Um, she's helped thousands of people navigate core life shifts and a little background on her. She's trained extensively with shamans, energy healers and spiritual teachers from North America, Peru, India and Asia in order to integrate the fields of self-empowerment, shamanic teachings, emotional release, energy healing, relationship counseling, spiritual studies, yoga, meditation, and empowered living. And I'll also add breath work because it's a huge part of what she does out there at Shine Sedona. And that's what we will be doing with her. She'll be guiding us through her signature shamanjelic breath work ceremony, which is going to be so powerful. She's traveled all over the world. She is definitely has a deep thirst for knowledge and techniques and tools that will help her be better at what she does. And she's traveled to sacred temples throughout Peru, Egypt, Lake, Lake Titicaca, Hawaii, Bali, Tulum, you know, and she's been all over and has such a vast amount of knowledge in the spiritual arts, I guess we might say. She's done, you know, I'm reading her bio. It says she's led over 120 retreats, but I guarantee it's been more since this was written. Um, and she does some of those out in Sedona as well. And she's just such a, she's so in integrity. She, you can tell that she's so in alignment with everything that she's teaching. Like she is embodied in what she's teaching and she just has such a vast array of tools. Um, so really excited to introduce her to you. And um, we do still have a little bit of room at my retreat. I think we have, I don't know, a couple rooms, maybe two or three spots left. So go to taragarrison.com and just right there on my homepage, you'll see the link to retreat. Just scroll down a little or you can go directly to taragarrison.com slash retreats and to get more info on that. And yeah, it's going to be a powerful one. I'm really excited. That's part of the reason I wanted to pull Anahata onto the podcast again. I mean, just one, because she's incredible, but two, I wanted my people coming to the retreats to get a little fresh on how amazing this woman is before they go experience that with her. So for all of you, you're in for a treat, whether you're coming or not. So without further ado, here is Anahata Ananda. Anahata. <laughs> Hello, sister. Here. Welcome and back. Welcome back to Sedona. Thank you. Yeah. And we're going to, later in the episode, we're going to hit on like embodying and being and actually, you know, bringing things down through the ethers into reality. And what a perfect <laughs> place to do this in, in your shine, Sedona, Sanctuary for the Soul. It is insanely beautiful and special and like fine. <laughs> That's the word I want. It is like really special. So. Yeah. Well done walking the walk of everything that you're teaching and bringing so much um, applicable and like potent knowledge mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I feel like as your gift is like being able to like really land, really land. And so you guys are in for a treat today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And welcome to my little baby, Shine <laughs> yeah. Sedona. And uh, it is the sanctuary for the soul. And it was my intention to have a space here in Sedona where people can be met wherever they are on the journey of awakening or healing trauma or stepping into their power or just learning tools to live more thriving, mm -hmm. you know, connected, meaningful, impactful, mm -hmm. soul mission guided mm -hmm. life. And everything that we do here, everything that we have here is to support that. And I'm so excited that you are coming here <laughs> Yes, um, yeah. in April yeah. because we also love to support different facilitators and wisdom teachers and influencers um, and teachers from different ranges to, to come here and let us hold that piece that you need support with or mm -hmm. come and use this space or whatever it is for sound healing, breath work, you know, individual journeys. And mm -hmm. like, we're here to support the community of teachers and healers and also the seekers and the light workers. Mm, it's so appreciated because <laughs> we all have like, there's so many little different uh, seats at the table or like little areas in the healing growth community, you know, and it's so wonderful. We can't, I can't become, uh, you know, an expert in my life mission on all of those things. Yeah. It's so wonderful when we can come together and give our little gifts. And you have a lot of gifts though. Like, I mean, you guys can't see cause we're in front of her beautiful wings here, <laughs> but we're in this like incredible space where we'll be doing breath work yep. at the retreat here in April. But you just got done with a training, teaching people to do a lot of the work that you do. Yeah. You know what, ha what, uh, over 10 years ago, I guess it was just before 2012, or 2012, it occurred to me when the, the kind of clientele, because I've been doing this work for almost 24 years, and there was a time when, when something shifted, mm -hmm. where the type of people that were seeking started shifting to more mainstream, more men, more affluent, more different ranges of, of people from all walks of life, different ages, different cultures, different genders. And, uh, it, you know, in sitting in meditation with that, like, hey, spirit, what's going on here? And it's like, we've reached into the bubble of mainstream. Yeah. And in doing so, we're going to need more light workers right. that are bringing embodied mm -hmm. tools and transformational impact that can help people shift out of density faster mm -hmm. with integrity, not skipping steps, right. but also learning the tools to stay embodied. And what do you need for internal alignment? What are the clues? What are the signs? Where am I stuck? What are the patterns? And we actually, what it would occur to me is spirits like open a school, teach light workers the mm -hmm. tools to be phenomenal facilitators mm -hmm. with high integrity and professionalism. Cause I hold a very high bar. Mm -hmm. I just do. It's too important when you're in an intimate space mm -hmm. with someone's very tender issues for me to not be right. in integrity and skilled and capable yeah. in navigating those waters, mm -hmm. you know, of transformation. And so I opened a school in 2012 and this is where I teach shamanjelic healing modalities and breathwork facilitator training because mm -hmm. more and more people are needing the deeper transformation so that they can get in alignment or clean, sober, embodied, out of disempowering or codependent dynamics, stop the patterns of cycles of addiction. And I'm all about efficient, efficient transformation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so breathwork, which I'm going to be facilitating for your group is one of my favorite modalities because it can go so deep. It can Seriously. work on the trauma side. It can work on heart opening and forgiveness. It can work on divine higher connection. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I want to be able to get all of that. Taken care yeah. Of. And yeah, I was telling you when we came, when I came in, like it, breath work has become one of my most favorite things to yeah. refer out for with coaching because, you know, I mean, my people know that I'm, I'm a psychedelics have helped me in my life, but it's too risky for me as a coach really to like, be like, Oh yeah, go find somebody. And like, I have no idea, but with breath work, I mean, for me, breath work has been in terms of what I think people are seeking, like, like getting s these old patterns that they know are just kind of like stuck in their body or their energy, energy body. They know it and they like, they can see it and they can feel it, but they don't know how to get it out. Like for me, it's just like, 
breath work just helps me release from, it feels like from a body sense, like I'm just different. Like I, I'm like, I get it now. I get it now, which has been a lot of my psychedelic journeys have, I've had moments like that, but in terms of legal issues, uh, you know, in terms of issues happening, problems happening, mental health stuff and medications people are in all these, you know, traumas and they're in this like really highly uncomfortable state and they don't know how to get out of it. Whereas breath work, you can just stop doing the breath work and just chill for a minute and cry or whatever. You don't even have to start back up if you don't want to. So, um, I love it. And I'm, and that's why I'm like, breath work will never not be part of my retreats now. And I'm like, so excited that they get to (laughs) come do it with you this year because you've been doing it so long and you're so good at what you do. And so for the sake of the podcast, I'm wondering if you can share, you know, um, probably people listening might range from maybe they're a breathwork facilitator or all the way to somebody that, that's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Or they might have maybe tried like yeah. one technique for like a minute, yeah. you know what I mean? But can you talk about breathwork and what it is yeah. and what it can do? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, breath is life force. So when we have a trauma or a betrayal or... Uh, you know, something that takes our breath away, it can get stuck in the visceral tissues, in the, in the, in the body. We can have cellular memory of a breakup, of betrayal, of a trauma, physical, sexual abuse, um, or just feeling like I don't fit in and I'm not enough or I'm not good enough. It doesn't have to be a physical, sexual, or energetic trauma. It can just be externalizing the judgment and criticism of other people or society or just com- the comparison-itis of I'm not blank enough or I'm too blank. Right. And that can contract our energy field or my voice isn't safe or my truth is not welcome or my emotional uh, expression is making other people feel comfortable. There's a whole lot of reasons from little to big to This isn't that little when it's just once, but it sure turns out to be a big thing when I have this happen a hundred times. And so we all have these different contractions or distortions, Mm -hmm. blocks, inadequacies, limiting beliefs, um, heartbreak, unworthiness. Like we, we all have these different things in our energy field. Some of them are somatically held in our physical tissues, like the weight of our relatives and their expectations on our shoulders, as an example, Um, or different traumas that are held in the body. But it's also held in the emotions. Watery emotions tend to be more like grief and sadness that maybe haven't had a safe, healthy, loving outlet for. Or when there is something that is dissonant or hurtful or painful and we don't feel safe and it doesn't feel right, it's not uncommon to feel anger, which turns to resentment, but then turns to rage when it's not dealt with. And when you're oppressing those things or that energy is locked in the body, really common for a codependent relationships as well as health problems in addition to addiction issues, whether that's workaholic or eating disorders, all of these different things are a correlation of some kind of dissonance, Mm -hmm. some kind of dissonance. And for whatever reason, I, I love the opportunity to hold space and be the explorer to say, how can I help you uncover the dissonance? How can I help you realign that dissonance and I found one of the most efficient efficient tools for that discovery and realignment, that release, and then the reclamation, the reclamation or the remembering or the retrieval of the authentic true self can come through breathing exercises. And I don't mean like the yoga breathing that just helps us to maybe relax Mm -hmm. or calm the mind. Or energize. Yeah, or energize uh, different types of things. Well, this is more what I call shamanjelic yeah. breath work, where the breath is designed, it's a pretty quick, deep pace, and it's designed to be that spark where that density that's held in the tissues or in the emotions or in the energy body 
or in the subconscious brain as you start breathing intensely and oxygenating these parts of your body, these things start to rise. And if there is a safe space and a skilled practitioner, because not all practitioners are skilled. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I do the training is to put skilled practitioners out there into the world so that they are trauma informed of how to move into somebody's energy field and support them through that process of release or grief or rage or sadness, um, or insecurity or unworthiness and how to move in with incredible integrity, immense compassion, and a level of range that allows you to tailor the breathwork experience and the support if one person might need to cry it out and somebody else is finally free from a relationship they're letting go of or they're reclaiming a part of their... Um, sexual sovereignty that got distorted in some experiences or experiences where they find their voice again to be able to have the range and the depth and the care and the presence to tailor the journey. And that's what's really different about shamanjelic breathwork who's a lot is just like everybody gets the same thing. And well, the truth is not everybody is the same person nor is everybody in the same place in their life or working with the same issue, doesn't mean that some people aren't, but a skilled practitioner will tailor the experience and be able to guide you into the shadow if needed and into your heart or through divine guidance or to experience unconditional love or just a safe space for you to express, mm -hmm. which is so healing and so rare today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, with the psychedelics, you don't always know if it's the right fit or if it's the right tool. And I do so much cleanup work after mm -hmm. people that have been to experiences that maybe it wasn't the right fit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't the right practitioner. Right. Maybe it wasn't the right time. Right. Maybe something was out of integrity and they didn't get the support or integration that they needed mm -hmm. and they were left worse. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that mm -hmm. come to me to do the cleanup work after Oh, I was a week here, or I did this thing because everybody else was doing it. Right. Well, I went camping with my friends, and I had a bad feeling about it, but I didn't want to be weird. Yeah. Yeah, I did feel FOMO. And I don't want to miss the out. Crap out of me, and the, yeah, they, yeah. They, they they have no preparation, integration. You know, yeah. they might not have even yeah, exactly right. Like that might not have been a good idea for them the or for place. where they're at in their life. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so breath work. Like sometimes people ask me, they're like, "What do you mean?" Because I, you know, it's surprising because I do feel like breath work is getting more and more, more common, popular, yeah. right? But it's still, you know, like if I'm doing like a group coaching call per se, it's like a new group, I'll be like, yeah. who's tried breath work? And it's usually like nobody, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So there, I was like, do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Like the hour long type thing? And they're like, not no. really, you know? No. And so um, can you tell people a little bit like what to expect if yeah. they were to go to one of these either here, which I would highly recommend. <laughs> Thank you. Like, you. Best, <laughs> or somewhere else. Every what? practitioner is going to be a little mm -hmm. bit different because mm -hmm. breath work covers a large scope. Some are going to use more sound healing and they may not provide personal support at all. They might have a great journeying kind of playlist that um, guides you to a breathing technique where some emotion or some feeling or some energy might arise and they may create a safe container for you to feel free to process or release or express or, or to shake off whatever you need. Some will come by with instruments. Some uh, will provide support. Some are really skilled at that. Some are not. So I, um, like anything, like any body worker or coach or right. energy healer or whoever, like I would do your due diligence of who you feel safe with. Yeah. Because if you are going to be opening these vulnerable places, I think it's really important to feel safe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't underestimate anyone's intuition. Mm -hmm. And if you feel drawn to somebody, there's probably something valuable there. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like, hey, mm -hmm. I don't, don't here, fully, just, or maybe it's me. not the right thing to, I'm really yeah. actually very tired and I have a headache and mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right fit at that time mm -hmm. for somebody. And so 
if you are ready to allow like a coach like you to say, hey, I'm witnessing here, here, and here, there's some blocks where kind of shamanic, deep, emotional release type breath work mm -hmm. may be beneficial for to, to release some density or to clear out these issues around blank. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think as a coach, you're so intuitive and skilled at honing in on the issue. And I really appreciate that you're also saying, and here's where I'm not the expertise. This yeah. isn't what I do, but I do see its benefit. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things that I'm very skilled at. And there's other things. Hey, go over here for that because yeah. that's not my thing. So thank you for being in such integrity about that. Yeah. And also not just saying, hey, talk therapy is going to do everything. Because yeah. there's some deeper issues, some beliefs that finally addressing it mm -hmm. can just open up everything. You can see where the addiction came from. Mm -hmm. You can, it can finally release this density of guilt or shame or somebody else's energy. And it is so liberating. So I would say like, has it been recommended to you by someone like yourself that sees that there, that might be a fit? Are you curious about it? And are you ready to just be curious about, is there anything, any density I could let go of? Hmm. It's just curious. Right. It, maybe you say no, and if it's no, maybe it's not your thing. And can I trust that if I let my intuition guide me, that I'll find the right person? And then when I go to that ceremony or that journey, whatever they call it, you know, it, that practitioner, that I'm going to show up all the way. Yeah, I'm going to just give it a try and do the keep deep breathing. And keep your eyes closed and go on an internal journey because that much breath, that much oxygenation is going to start to shift your brain chemistry mm -hmm. and it's going to start to bring the unconscious conscious. It's going to start to bring the oppressed to the surface. And if you give yourself permission and the practitioner is great at giving you permission and you feel safe, then for the first time, maybe ever or for a long time, you might have a good cry or a good... Always. Like, <laughs> I've cried a lot. Yeah. And some, the very first time that I did breath work was rage. Wow. When I felt nice. safe and I didn't feel judged as a woman for yelling. Nice. Because a lot of men feel judged for crying and a lot of women feel judged for right. raising their voice or getting angry. Right. When we release all the stigma, then if I really feel safe... And the container is held, which again, is not always the case. But when you do that due diligence and you feel safe, and that's what we pride ourselves here. Mm -hmm. Like it, you, it, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's no doubt. sacred for mm -hmm. sure. And then when you give yourself permission and it's safe, rage may come yes. about the thing that Oh, well, they just you've bypassed. Oh, well, they were just doing their best right. or like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that might be true. And what you are denying is the fact that your inner child or the part of you that is hurt is still not healed. Right. And you're angry and you're busy over forgiving them, mm -hmm. bypassing and actually oppressing your feelings again. Now mm -hmm. I'm doing that to myself mm -hmm. instead of saying, it's okay for me to be angry. Yeah. This sucked. Right. Right. This wasn't okay. And maybe at three or at seven or 17 or 25 or 32 or yesterday <laughs> or five minutes ago, maybe you didn't feel safe to sit, call bullshit on it. Like, no, this was not okay. Right. And I don't feel like that, that it was okay. And maybe now at this stage, at this age, we can give ourselves permission to feel it, mm -hmm. face it, release it. Mm -hmm. express it in a safe space that is judgment free, yeah. which we probably didn't have at the time of the trauma or right. not necessarily trauma, but of that experience where they just didn't expect me, accept me for who I am. Right. They always wanted me to be like this or whatever the story is. There's something I think in breath work for everybody. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know, it's, I mean, you said it perfectly. It's bringing the unconscious to the conscious yeah. mind. And at the same time, 
encouraging whatever release is needed. Like at my last retreat, we had one of my favorite releases. It was like one of my favorite releases <laughs> I've ever been like the recipient. That, like I felt so lucky to, you know, be in that space. But it was like one of our um, participants, she has a very demanding, very demanding work life. Like yeah. it's a lot of serious business, you know. She's moving, you know, big pawns all the time. Like it's a lot That's of pressure. Intensity. And she <laughs> laughed. She had the <laughs> most contagious laugh. We could, none of us could stop laughing with her. And it was so beautiful to see that. And then we had a woman in grief and she just let out the biggest belly deep from her belly sobs. And it just made me cry, you know, like, and it was so, it's so beautiful. And, And that's another thing is like, I think sometimes you know, it's like when you first go to yoga and they're like, take a deep breath and you like, don't want anyone to hear you breathing. You're like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and I think like sometimes people are going to have fear of that, but I think that's why breath work is so beautiful. Cause I mean, sure you could still have the fear and like maybe work your way into it. But for the most part, like you're not really like totally running the show with so much control as usual. Like you're in this space where you're just like, I need to do what I need to do. And it's so freeing and rage for women. I'm like, I need to send every woman here because it's really hard to access like anger and rage for a lot of women. And they do exactly that survival mechanism of, well, you know, like, you know, he's not perfect. He wasn't, you know, he had a, he, he, I I forgive him. And like, you can tell when that hasn't. And what that is doing is just being the people pleaser in the economy accommodator at the expense of self. Yeah. And that there's a cost to that. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we can't honor, okay, that's the best they could do, or they did make a mistake and they said they were so oh, that is all may be true, but my feelings about it yeah. are also true and mm-hmm. also matter. Mm-hmm. And your grief matters. Yeah. Like we're such a culture that is like, get over it already. And that doesn't really honor grief or just Oh, it's breakup. Just get, Hey, hop on the next dating app, swipe and let's go. And doesn't allow us to be present with our emotions, which are very intelligent. You know, as a human, like sadness means you're experiencing life and loss Mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things we want to go this way went this way. Things we want to go longer are cut short. We have the right to have a feeling about Mm -hmm. it. And when things are pulled from us when it doesn't feel right, when we got betrayed, when somebody, like the situation isn't what we thought it was, and we have the right to be angry as well. And in breath work, it's a safer place for that anger than in your relationship unchecked after a few drinks, because then I guarantee that rage, that anger is going to start to come out and be aggressive yeah. or it's going to be internalized and then we've got a cancer situation. Yeah. And so this is about letting that release valve, valve out. And sometimes what we need is just when we're so serious, sometimes we just need our inner child yeah. to play and have some fun. Yeah. Sometimes we've been trapped in these kind of um, oppressive relationships or jobs that maybe we didn't choose from a place of empowered or it used to fit, but it doesn't fit us anymore, or we're choosing it to not disappoint someone else. Mm -hmm. And so we can feel kind of trapped and resentful in that. And sometimes in breath, we're going to see the most like, yippee, (laughs) freedom. Oh, finally, I can choose my happiness Mm -hmm. over this unhealthy, shitty career. (laughs) And it's like, yes, you can. And there's plenty of life left (laughs) to start a new chapter. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of life left to reset and unchoose something that isn't in alignment that maybe was, or you didn't know that it wasn't until you figured out, okay, maybe I think this isn't safe or it isn't healthy, or I'm just over it. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming to completion. Mm -hmm. Then there is this epiphany and wake up call. And what I think I, I, one of my favorite things that happens in breath work is not only all this release, but radical clarity. Yeah. Well, if that's not it, what are you putting in its place and where are you going next? Yeah. I think radical clarity and soul insight, because now all the brain isn't clogged with all these limiting beliefs Mm -hmm. and you've taken the emotional trash out Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So now there's all this space, space. to create, exactly. to allow inspiration, which, which is just to, to let spirit in. Inspiration in spiritos mm-hmm. means, can I make space for spirit to help guide me, whether that's your intuition or your soul or mm-hmm. your great grandma that's on the other side or your divine counsel or Jesus or whoever, there can be this openness now to access divine guidance or a higher power or higher consciousness, or as you like to say, right? Your soul, Mm -hmm. your soul wisdom and that soul connection, because then that can start guiding you instead of everybody else or fears, doubts, limitations guiding you. And I just feel that on the journey of transformation, that is a game changer. And Mm -hmm. like you, when you get back into the driver's seat of your own life again, I'll share really real with you guys. Like I recently, I did a breath work session. I was feeling all of these intuitive pulls Mm -hmm. to make some big moves in my business, some big project, like big things. And I had so much resistance because (laughs) when I first started, I mean, it was pedal to the metal. It was like stage four adrenal fatigue. That's not really a thing, but you know, that's what it felt like (laughs) that, right? Like it was just like so much. And I had finally kind of gotten to a place of like, a little more ease, enjoying time with my kids, like, you know, and all of that. And I was feeling these pools and I just had this in my body, like, I don't want to go back into that place. Right. And then I saw I was resisting it for quite a while. And then I did a breath work session and I just exactly what you said. The first thing that started to come through was like, I kind of needed to have a little pity party. Yeah. I needed to like cry for myself. Like that was really hard. And that was also really amazing what you did, but like acknowledging like freak that pushed you to your limits. That was very hard, you know, and just giving myself that like empathy, that sympathy, really. Like I needed to kind of like feel that I was, I was just like, yup, did what I had to do kind of, you know, but I needed that. And then as soon as that, all that cry fest cleared, It made space and I got this beautiful, like literally visual representation. I was like on the front of a boat speeding through this river between these epic mountains. And it was like, this is what's going to feel like this time, Tara. Like you're not in the same place. You can, if you, as long as you stay connected to your heart, it's going to feel like this, just like right on the front of the boat. Like, woo, you have resources, you have experience, you have, you know, like, so I, 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 my last breath work session was made, that was maybe four months ago or something. And it was exactly what you just said. So I just want to vouch for that. It's, it's really real making that space by getting rid of the crud. (laughs) Then like the truth can come in or your voice or your intuition, your soul truth can come in and start guiding. And also if it's going to feel like this, if it's not going to feel like adrenal fatigue stage (laughs) four again, then I get to do it in a way that also feels good where I'm included yeah. and I, there's downtime and there's family yeah, time. Exactly. There's time to replenish and it's not all from this place of force, but there's right. also, you can connect to this beautiful place of self-love and self-acknowledgement where it's like, you know what? I matter too, not just yeah, my clients, Exactly. my joy and my happiness and my mm-hmm. like free time matters too, so that the performance measure starts shifting exactly. as to how it feels like right. it's going to feel good. Yeah. I already knocked one of them out and I had a blast doing it. Cool. It really wasn't that hard. And yeah, once you start prioritizing presence and calm yeah. and stillness more than busy, you know, it's like, I, I, I know, you know, we're going to do things we're going to create, but yeah. like when you value presence, when you value just sitting and watching the flower or the rainfall on the flower or the birds or just being really present with my kids or just having that slow, <laughs> you approach the, the, the masculine, you know, which we talked about on our last episode, but you approach that creation mode with that sense of presence in you, yeah. right? It's not this erratic, like, go, toxic masculine, yeah. running, have to running, do more. running. Like you, you're like, it's a much more, it feels like a much more mature and um, efficacious way mm-hmm. of creating. It's just calm, you know. And it's so. integrated. It's balanced yeah, it's where balanced. it's not just force, 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 right. but there's also replenishment and we value that mm-hmm. nurturing and self-care. 
All right, let's switch. Let's okay. switch over because I want my people to hear you talk about <laughs> transformation, obviously, Love since it. that's what we're doing in the Sedona Retreat, and you are the <laughs> I mean, one of the most experienced teachers out there on transformation. So I was wondering if you could share about the process of embodiment. You know, we talked a little bit about you mentioned, and I'm like, uh, that's like everybody. I'm sure you guys can relate this. I, I have these things. I, I feel like I'm I'm getting intuitive nudges or maybe not, but I have these things that I, I feel like I'm capable of or like that I'm being told to work on, but I don't know how and I don't know how to actually be it. And I have all these, you know, self-sabotage behaviors and so. Yeah. <laughs> Can Wonderful. You share. Thank you. Embodiments. Right. And so I, th- I, I look at this as, as, as an elemental roadmap, you know, so if... Way up here is the idea or the inspiration. That's like up in the ethers. And it's, you know, sometimes that's blocked where we don't even have the inspiration or we don't see what's possible. And so we've got to clear out the density to start making way for the unknown or the unseen to become seen because we can't even bring in a new dream into manifestation into the physical 3D if we don't know what it is. Mm. So we start kind of first with clearing out the density, knowing that if in the physical reality, in the earth, like 3D, your life, your health, your finances, your community, your relationships, um, your career, if it's not what you want, then something from way up here that wasn't yours, wasn't true, was way outdated or was, or was not really a fit or it doesn't fit any longer, got manifest into the physical reality into the earth, physical body. It's translated to toxic relationships, Mm dis-ease, or wonky finances or a career that I don't really want. So if it's already manifested into the physical reality, we're going to have to do some unchoosing so that we put something else in its place. Well, if I don't want this, I'm going to have to let go of that to make space for another thing. in. Because people are like, well, how did you make this transition to here? Well, I unchose yeah. the thing that was out of resonance, leaking my energy, mm-hmm. creating stress. It's like I unchose alcohol, and that changed a whole mm-hmm. trajectory of things. It's like this is not working for me. Mm-hmm. This is not beneficial. So this is like some truth time. What is not working here in the 3D in my human experience? Mm. And we've got to just take a moment and be present with truth time. This isn't it. This is not. This part is great. This part is fabulous. This is okay. But if you've got something on a scale of 1 to 10 that's less than a 5, lean in. (laughs) Because if unchecked in the physical reality, it will get worse. The Unchecked. The finances will get worse. The relationships will get worse. The addiction will get worse. The health will get worse. If out of a scale, on a scale of one to 10, you have anything lower than a five, it's, it's already providing a wake up call. It's time to manifest something else. Otherwise you're just going to manifest an exit plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I'm being honest Mm -hmm. and I know it sucks, but that's, and sometimes that's the wake up call where it's like, I can't do this any longer. I need to make a change. This unhealthy relationship or this unhealthy career. And sometimes as humans, we just like, we get to a place where it has to be that frustrating where we're like, all right, now I'm motivated. Mm -hmm. So now there's, okay, now I want this instead. If this isn't it, Then we start putting an idea up here in the ethers or we allow divine spirit to bring an idea in for it, whether it's a vision, a dream or a new reality. Mm. Like it starts in the ether way up here with a dream, an idea. Like what would it look like if I was more financially stated? What would a healthier relationship look like? What would my dream career look like and feel like way up here? Mm. And we've got to start with the vision but that's just the vision. It's then that's ether. Then we move into the throat because then we start air. We start talking about it. Mm. This is what I'm manifesting. This is my truth. This is my dream. This is my no. Like this is where I'm headed, right? We start expressing. Mm. 
But that still isn't manifested, because yeah. have you ever said, like, okay, it, like yeah. the first of the year, I'm going to stop yeah. this, and I'm going to start this, right. and then by day three, January 3rd, it's like back to doing the thing right. again. This is the journey to manifestation, starting with the vision that this is where I want to go, and this is what's possible. Whether spirit shared it with you or you have this feeling and knowing, then we start expressing it. We start letting other people know. We start feeding our vision. Mm -hmm. What do I need in the physical 3D way down here in order to stay, sustain this? Mm -hmm. And if I'm around a lot of people in my 3D community that are dream haters, yeah. that are negativitarians. Yeah. <laughs> or just don't have access to that uh, way then of thinking. I might need to start changing yeah. my community. I might need to start changing my diet. I might need to start different things down here in the root chakra. And so we start expressing, but then we start to look at what support do I need for this to bring about manifesting it into right. reality? And what's the gap between what I have now and what I need which means now we're going to get, in, get in, into, the, into the fire element. What action do I need to take? Mm -hmm. I might need to move. I might need to quit. I might need to do a cleanse. I might need to set a boundary with somebody. There's all kinds of different things that now I'm in the fire element, which is the solar plexus. This is my truth time. Mm -hmm. This isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. Or it's time for me to step into that. I need to ask for help. I need a coach or I need a fitness guide because I don't know how to get from A to B. Mm -hmm. But somebody does. Right. Somebody's been there before. And if the dream was given to you by your higher self, your passionate self or your divine self, whatever, there is a way. It doesn't mean your brain currently knows it with mm -hmm. the experience and the knowledge that you have, mm -hmm. but you can find a way. Yeah. Somebody knows, somebody can help. There's something you're going to have to release that you've been holding on to to make space. Yeah. Maybe it's like, I need to spend less time on Netflix. I might need to spend less time in bed. I might need to spend more time moving or getting out in nature or talking to a coach or somebody else, a strategist that knows what I don't know. Right. Cause somebody knows how to do it. Yeah. You don't have to do it yourself. Your how right. is like, okay, if I don't know how ask for help, mm -hmm. let go of what's in the way. And it, you're going to have to start taking action. As soon as you start taking action with the fire element, it's going to start to transmute things that you're attached to. Yeah. So here comes this water element, the ocean of emotion. <gasps> if I set a boundary, if I let go of alcohol, then what happens to all my drinking buddies? Right. If I say no to this toxic relationship, then they might leave me. And I'll be alone. So then all of this ocean of emotion starts rising of what is in the way between your dream and the manifestation. Mm. I may have to have more tools to set clearer boundaries. I might have to release grief and the pleaser in me so that I don't give my dream away to somebody that doesn't want me to change my life. Then there's all of these tools, which where people like you are, you're so great at coaching that can help you navigate the tools to help you inch towards that. And this takes a minute. Mm -hmm. This takes time. Mm -hmm. Like going from, okay, I want this dream to it's manifested and I can hold it. Right. Like there's a lot of tools because mm -hmm. if you didn't learn these things that got you to hear, you're going to need to learn new things, ask for help, surround yourself with other people, make some different choices. If you want a different destination, you're going to have to make different choices. Yeah. You're going to need to surround yourself with different people. Mm -hmm. And you're going to need to be doing different things with your time. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like when I started saying yes to certain things that really meant a lot to me, it automatically meant that I was having to say no to other things because I just didn't have the bandwidth right. to do both. Right. And so it became, I'm prioritizing the more resonant thing yeah. with more resonant relationships, more resonant free time, that. more resonant family time and more quality, you know, quality self-care time. And, um, 
then you've got to move through the ocean of motion because it's going to come and see like, are you really serious about this? And you have to get over your grief or your insecurity or your anger or your rage or your doubts, your limitations, like all of these things that are things you oppressed. As soon as you start moving towards your truth, these things are going to start to rise that you put the pause button on that now you got to pay the bill. Yeah. And yeah. it's okay yeah. because when you are connected to that passion and that desire so great, mm -hmm. it fuels the fire of like, I can get through this. I can face yeah. this and I can ask for help. Mm -hmm. There are buoys. There are, Hey, can you send me a life raft? Help me learn how to swim mm -hmm. through and navigate my own emotions so that then I learn how to swim through that yeah. and face it on my own with great coaches like yourself, great counselors, healers. There's all kinds of people that can help you through that so that it's like, now I know this here, but I also embody it yes. here. This is right. who I am. Now it becomes as solid as Thunder Mountain here in Sedona where it's not moving. Doesn't matter if my mom's critical, doesn't matter if my ex judges or right. whatever. It's like, this is my truth. I know it. It's embodied. I've passed all the tests here. I'm staying put. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the root chakra where it's manifested. Mm -hmm. And then we can start bringing more and more into manifestation. Doesn't mean you don't have to face your fears or that being in new territory it's always perfect or graceful. I mean, when you are talking about launching a bigger thing, then a bigger version of you is going to need to show up to hold that exactly. space. Exactly. And everything that's not in resonance, any cracks in the foundation that might fit this version of you mm -hmm. or the current version of anybody mm -hmm. is going to say, oh, at this level, I need more integrity in this level. I need better communication in this right. level. I need to triple down on my self care. Mm -hmm. I need to be really excellent at saying no. Mm -hmm. I need to be disciplined about when I step back from work, mm -hmm. like all the cracks in yeah. the foundation. Anytime you move through transition are showing you the cracks so that you can shore them up and release those things and bring something else in. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's upgrade. It's upgrading. So yeah. it's not just like, oh, I'll just do this because then you, you get to upgrade all the versions of you that are going to need to be there in order to stay holding that new dream. Mm. Thank you for that. And I like when I think this is why it's so important to one, do things like breath work or energy healing work or Reiki or whatever form of clearing speaks to you. you yeah. Know? Because once those, at least for me, like mine definitely come like through the ethers, right? Yeah. And it's so in my soul, like it's my it's, it's, it's always something that I know is like the best for me and others and the work, you know, and it's just, it's this, I can see it and feel it. And when I'm actually in that fire element and the water element of a moment, like, I'm like, Ooh, you got some stuff here. The, I, I want to work on them because I have this vision, this thing, you know, whereas like, if I was just kind of, you know, sitting around not, I, I don't even know if I would have a reason. I wouldn't even notice. But when you realize, whoa, I got some stuff that's holding me back here. I think that's probably why you have, you know, all these like business people and like, cause they're like, they're becoming aware of like, wow, I have, I have things that I'd like to create. I have a life I'd like to create for yeah. myself. And I just realized I got all this stuff. I need to get past this so I can actually yeah. honor that, you yeah. know? So for sure. Really well said. Thank you for that. <laughs> and speaking of that, I wanted to make sure, I, can you tell people what they can experience here at Shine? Yeah. And then also, I know you have a lot of online things for people and, you know, the, like the training you're doing right now, but we'll start with Shine. Like what, if people come to Sedona, like what can they experience here? Come to uh, visit us here at, at Shine in Sedona, which is shinesedona.com. So you can absolutely come to shine if you're wanting to come for a retreat, if you're wanting to come for breath work, if you're wanting to come for, um, we have fabulous boutique, which I know it, it's insane. <laughs> I'm, I, it'll be on my Instagram story like right over there. So hopefully you catch it, but 
I, it is like the most beautiful pics of everything. <laughs> like you will die. Make sure you hit the batik at least if you're going to be in Sedona. I'm very, <laughs> I love be the, you know, procuring the, yeah, really <laughs> high quality handmade or high frequency or beautiful conscious items that, that are like in our boutique that, that, you know, lots of people can benefit from. It's the most unreal assortment of beautiful, high quality things I've ever seen. And a lot of that is on our Shopify. Some of that is oh, really? on our Shopify. Okay. So you can come here in Sedona and shop. That's one. Yeah. You can go on the nice. Shine Sedona Shopify. So if there's some things on there, some of those things are virtual. Cool. So you can get those on shipped. The, on ShineSedona.com. ShineSedona.com. Yeah, if you go to the shop, nice. it will show you cool. shop in person That's or shop know. virtual. Yeah. yeah we, so we, you're not to... everybody's here in <laughs> Sedona. But if you come in, this is a must-stop shop nice. to, to, to arrive not only for the boutique, but then... There's a couple other offerings, like in our consultation room, we have amazing Akashic reading record, mm -hmm. record reading, which is kind of like your soul history and divine guidance from your soul. So readings, card readings, angel readings, um, human design, astrology, like lots of phenomenal readers. Cool. Then in our healing womb room, which you saw. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So special. So I, yeah. When I was building this space, I literally put rose quartz in the walls wow. in that room. And I put crystals in all the walls before the walls wow. went up. I put specific awesome. crystals in the whole space. Mm. Um, so you can come and do a private session based on what you need. You can come and do a session with me. We have other shamanic healers. You can do shamanic journeys, Reiki, energy alignments, chakra uh, balancing, Breath work, sound healing, all kinds of private one-on-one -on -one cool. because sometimes you just need deep reset or support or energy attunement, um, which we are absolutely have incredible practitioners for that. And then in this main room, um, which is a 2,000 square foot space, yeah, it's nice. we do breath work, we do sound healing, we do dance, we do um, full moon Mm -hmm. gatherings. We have women's retreats, men's retreats. We have all kinds of different things where that you can come and either just come and hop in on something that's on the calendar mm -hmm. or say, hey, we're bringing a group of 10 women to have this experience or we're facilitating a retreat and we want you to just do a land journey or a breathwork ceremony just private for us. We can absolutely do private sound healing, private breath work, or you can book in on some of those public ones. And some of the workshops that we do are virtual and available online. So you can, if you want to do a clear boundaries course or balancing the feminine and masculine course, uh, some of those you can tune in mm -hmm. virtually. But really, like, we are here to love and support you wherever you are at. There's something here for everyone. Mm -hmm. If it's entry level, and you're like, what's what? What, what do we do? This? Like, we'll show you. We'll take you yeah. by the end. Like, literally, when you walk in the door, we're going to yeah. say, "Welcome to Shine." And that's not only welcome to this community, but also welcome to your own radiance, <laughs> and like finding where that is and what that is and what's blocking it, so that you can like emerge from this place at whatever level of readiness you are to spread your wings even just a little more, a little brighter for others to experience. Mm, yeah. I mean, she's <laughs> just finished up this evening. You just finished up day five of like an all day training and was, you were so kind of like squeeze us in at the end of the night. And she was like, Oh, hi, welcome. It's so warm. So you, you'll feel right at home. And I, yeah, I appreciate that you bring that and, yeah. and, and that you've created this, you know, it's this like so many years of like such a journey that you've been on yeah. to be, be able to bring all of this here, you know? Well, that's the roadmap to transformation, yeah. you know, because, well, and people may want to come if they're called to be a light worker or they're already a coach yeah. or a teacher or a healer and want to learn how to facilitate deeper transformation. I literally open up my medicine bag of 24 years and say, let me show you how to trust your intuition, how to bring forward your heart and how to facilitate transformation in person for others. And it's, it's phenomenal. Awesome. I love teaching. So that's like a 14 day immersion, which isn't for everybody, but sure is going to be medicine for just the that right people. Really awesome. I know. 14 days here <laughs> and in Sedona, like right? and learning and I'm all of bringing that. it. But, um, but you know, like I was feeling, 
I had reached a certain plateau, even though everything was amazing mm -hmm. and all the success measures are pointing, you know, like mm -hmm. good, good, good. I'm like, there's something else. Wow. There is something else. And I kept feeling like this limitation of how many people I could reach mm. and also not having a sacred space always here in Sedona for it because this place is just not big enough or this place isn't really cohesive or it's not energetically a vibe I'm interested in. And so like in the middle of COVID, when think businesses are shutting down and people are distancing and there's a lot of paranoia spirit my higher self was like open a brick you know open a brick and mortar i was like you can just go somewhere else with that idea. And you're like you must be uh, a la, 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 or... go somewhere else <laughs> like i'm just putting a veto on that right now yeah because that dream, and it was so visceral. Wow. And it, the visual well, of, of course. it was so visceral <laughs> in me wow. that, this, that Sedona needed a center like this, but so did humanity need a light center that yeah. is bridging out to other towns and other countries right. and different cultures and different people from different walks of life. And and I just saw these sparks of light coming from this pillar of light here in Sedona. Mm. And it was like, well, uh, you know, I was backpedaling right. immediately because of the time. I'm like, yeah. uh-uh, like here comes all these, sense. this doesn't make <laughs> sense. And, but it kept tugging on me. And sometimes mm -hmm. your soul truth will be like, oh, yeah. and it's still, you can push the pause button, oh, yeah. but it's it still does. the truth. Yeah. You can say, la, 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 no, not me. And it's still yep. the truth. And I knew that if I didn't do it, I would have felt regret yeah. and not fulfilled. I would have known that by the end of life, I never knew what could have happened there, Ugh. regardless of whatever happens, because right. I'm not attached, right. because I just know that. I'm becoming who I need to be in the birthing of this and that we're reaching whoever we will reach mm -hmm. and that shine has a soul mission. And I'm just here to listen and right. show up and serve exactly. and keep refining my wings, my little feminine feathers of intuition and trust and self care and my little yeah. masculine feathers of courage and resilience and boundaries and mm -hmm. integrity and to just keep doing mm -hmm. and spirit because i just kept resisting was like you don't get to say no if the reasons are from fear doubt or lack nice. and i was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> Because all my all of my excuses and were in all three of those buckets, uh, and it's like so it's like look, will you can face your fears? Yeah. We'll work on the lack together. Nice. Just because you don't have the money right now and I didn't, right. doesn't mean you can't find a way. Right. A fear, doubt, or like, doubt. Uh, this is too big. Right. I don't know how to do. Th Listen, your soul calling is going to push you into places that you have never been. That doesn't right. mean it's not the right fit for you. Right. But I was like, okay. And I finally just was like, well, if, I'm not saying I am, <laughs> but if, and I let myself dream. And I was up nice. for two and a half hours in the middle of the night. Like it would be this and there would be a room. There would be a boutique. Uh -huh. Here's the 20 things I already know would be in the boutique before nice. even open. Oh, there would be golden wings on the wall. This is, these are practitioners that would be there. This is what would be offered. And it was just like, boop, brrr. Yeah. and this whole dream downloaded in two and a half hours. And then I tried to go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> then we go, but how? Right. It's not our job to know the how. It's our job to just take the next two steps. Mm. And if I don't know how, then I went to the city and said, what is the zoning for this? Because I don't know how. Right. I went to a friend of mine that was a contractor. How do I do a build out? Because I don't know how. Right. What Help me, walk me through this. Tell me what I don't know. I asked other business owners in Sedona, what are your lessons? What is your advice? Nice. I got really humble and I asked for a lot of help. Nice. Um, 
And for those skills that I didn't have, I'm like, I need a project manager. I need this and I need that. I need investors. Yeah. I need help. Yeah. And the reason why I kept reaching such a ceiling was I was trying to do everything myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh dear, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to not only have to ask for help, I'm going to have to get really comfortable with being new at things that I don't know how to do. Mm -hmm. And I also am going to have to get comfortable with making lots of mistakes because I've never been here before and I have made lots of mistakes. Right. But we are sitting in the physical manifestation of something that was up in the ether that yeah. is like, okay, I'm talking about it. <laughs> and I'm then starting to make a roadmap. How yeah. do I start making a roadmap of how do I break this down into just the next two steps, nice. the next two steps. And if I don't know how to take the next step or I need emotional or strategic or financial or legal or accounting support, let me ask for help mm -hmm. because your sole mission, you will have to have support yeah. and you just one step at a time. Yeah, that is so well said. Thank you. And it's, I mean, it reminds me of me, you know, sending someone to, um, like I do some blood work and things, but as soon as I'm like I, I'm a naturopath, go to a naturopath doctor, I don't know, <laughs> you know, or a breathwork facilitator or, you know, a, an, another coach that I know really specializes in this one thing. Like I, I think that when we do that, like we all win, you know, like every, you get more ease. Everything is done better than it would be otherwise. Like if I was trying to be, you know, a breathwork facilitator and a coach and, um, I don't know, a, a shaman and yeah. all, I'd like it, my, the quality of what I would experience and others would experience would go down dramatically. Yeah, diminishing returns. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's such a, uh, more optimal way to live. But when you're in that like dream vision state and you're like, this is all new territory, it's still, it's like, I love your d description of like, just talking to people who have businesses, like, tell me what that's like, you know, brick and mortar. Tell me what that's like, you know, like help me out. Uh -huh. I don't know. That Own what you know, and also be willing yeah. to be teachable right. and new right. and be forgiving and gentle with yourself because right. you're going to, I've made so many mistakes. Oh my gosh. Hiring mistakes. Right. Like, like, you know, spend like right. so many right. different mistakes. And then totally. you get to be like, okay, I could bully myself right now, or I can pick myself back up. Mm -hmm. I can make compassion. I might need to throw a little tantrum. And then I'm like, what am I here to learn? What could I do differently? And what's the next step? Because yeah. I got to get it together. Yeah. And if I learn this lesson now, then I won't repeat it again because it will be more costly next time. So I'm yeah. going to take a little pause and be like, what can I learn from this? Otherwise, I'm going to get the lesson slapped in my face mm -hmm. again, which yep. it has. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, we're going <laughs> to yeah. try this again. I like to get playful with myself. I'm like, dude, apparently you needed to learn that at a $10,000 level. Yes, exactly. You're not going to forget. What did you learn? Yeah. Or you're not going to yeah, forget that. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I call that business life school tuition, <laughs> yeah. business school 101. I need clear contracts. I need clear agreements. Yeah. I need to trust my intuition. Some lessons are more expensive than others, That's but it. they are also a lot less forgettable. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening to this, I just want to acknowledge that there's something here for you, whether it's your coaching tools, whether it is something we've shared in this podcast that yeah. poked you somewhere like, oh, damn, yeah. or, oh, yes, right. like you're not listening to this by mistake. Right. If you're still listening, you're our people. Yeah. And just know that there's something here, whether it's at Shine, whether it's at the retreat that's coming up in April, yeah. whether it's at Breathwork with whoever, whether just get the support you need, whether it's with us or somebody else. Like there's so many fabulous people out there. And I, I just want to acknowledge that there's something here for you. And you wouldn't have gotten it had you not just done the podcast yeah. and stayed with it and been wonderful at taking the time on your, in the middle of your like time here in Sedona on a late Wednesday night to just be like, this is important to me. 
I want to bring tools to people. And it's free. Mm -hmm. Can we just shout out for the sister <laughs> right here? Like, thank you for bringing some Thanks. valuable insights to people that really need it. And I know something's landed here for mm -hmm. people listening that is going to be impactful. Mm, thank you. Yeah, there's no way two women <laughs> diving deep into our our own integrity, I guess. You know, you said it, the perfect word. There's no way the us two here and you listening that, that there wasn't something there for. I, I, I just, I don't know about you, but I just believe that everybody who comes into my arena is there for a reason. For sure. You know, like, and, 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 and it's a, it's a two way street. You know, I learn a lot from everyone who comes into my arena and that, I guess we'll close with that. Um, just, I don't, I don't, can't guarantee this, but when this comes out, but as of now, we still have a few rooms left, maybe two for this Adona retreat, something like I shared. I don't know. My, my retreat partners do that. But if you want to hang out with me in Anahata, you can come to that. So we'll link that up in the show notes and we'll link up Shine Sedona. So if you're ever in the area, like plan ahead a little bit because Sedona is so magical and, and, and just, it's just so like, it's like a sweet town. It's like actually rather quiet. It probably doesn't feel like that to you anymore because you've lived here for a long time, but it's wonderful. It's so, it's so wonderful. It's so spacious. It's so peaceful. And sometimes though, I think people will drop into Sedona and they're not like, what do I do? What exactly totally do I do? So like, you know, plan ahead we'll a little help bit you out. or pop by, you know, at least the boutique and, and get the experience. But um, yeah, we'll link that up. And thank you so much. And this isn't the last time you're going to be in Sedona. No, you're going to be. So if this timing doesn't work for yeah. you, just in case there's no spots left and it's sold out yeah. or you're hearing this after the retreat. Right. She does tons of these too. <laughs> tons of But you'll events. be back here again. Yes. So this is just the beginning of us co-facilitating here in Sedona and there's lots of magic happening just take the next two steps to rise and shine well you said. know well said. <laughs> and thank you sister for shining your light so brightly likewise yeah thank you.